I said, you motherfuckers is crazy. I said, I got to talk. I got to tell what I feel. I got to talk about my life as I see it. And now for our feature presentation. Hi, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Life as I See It, the podcast. I'm your host, Jerz, a.k.a. Life as I See It, episode 138. Uh, we got the fellas in the building tonight. We got Rico Key in the building. We got Gert in the building. Uh, shouts to C, shouts to Bad Logs, a.k.a. Woozy. Um, of course, make sure that, you know, everybody listening, if it's your first time or not, make sure that y'all subscribe on Spotify, on Apple, on YouTube. Uh, make sure y'all check out our Patreon at patreon.com backslash life as I see the podcast. And, um, you know, today we got a, uh, we got a special guest, you know, normally we don't really have guests, but, uh, we definitely got a special guest, uh, in the building with us tonight. Um, you know, I, I guess before I get into, you know, what I'm, what I was about to get into, just to uh, tell you a little about, a little bit about uh, who I'm referring to. Um, he is a, a former NFL uh, player. I'm going to say, I'm personally going to say, and I'm not just saying this because you're here. I'm going to say superstar just because I understand how he used to really get to it. Cause I've seen it from a different perspective. So I say su superstar from a from an athletic ability perspective, but former NFL player, um, alumni of Virginia Tech, um, they won a couple. Uh, I, I see the I see the hat right there. You know what I'm saying? They won a couple. Uh, was it was it Peach Bowls? Orange Bowl. Orange Bowls. Orange Bowls. Uh, won a couple Orange Bowls um, in his college days. Um, just a good dude, man. Uh, without further ado, we have. Uh, Rashad Carmichael, you call him Rock Carmichael. Um, so Rock, man, what up, man? Welcome to the hey, show. Um, hundred percent, bro. Um, like you said, I appreciate it. You know, you guys um uh, inviting me on. Um, honestly, man, I didn't understand why it took so long for me to get on the <laughs> show. Yeah, I remember it was first started. You know what I'm saying? And we was going back and forth, and you know, so. I'm a, you know, like I say, proud of you guys. Um, me and Jerz, man, we go shoot way back to about 2008-ish, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Kind of growing up as young men together, you know, traveling back and forth, you know, doing a lot of, we did a lot of hanging out together, man. So that was always cool. Um, you know, to, to now, man, I'm kind of still doing that same thing. You know, I'm a community guy. You know, I, I, I serve, um, try to help as many, um, you know, as the youth get to where I went to, you know, like I say, I, you know, we grew up different. It wasn't about the social media and, you know, bragging on yourself and all that yeah. shit. So, but it's kind of like how you gotta, you know, do things and kind of get into it now. So it's like, you know, I don't even really like to get into, you know, my ball and all of that, but, you know, I, I did some things, man, made some plays and um, made some good relationships and some good friends over time. And like I say, that's why, why I'm here now, man, for sure. Were absolutely, absolutely, and um, you know, it's interesting to um to kind of just hear you uh say what you just said in terms of just not it being about yourself, um, because again, like you said, it's social media days. It's it's look at me, look at what I'm doing. Attention's the new drug, like you know what I'm saying. And if you use that the wrong way, it can send you down a whole different path. But you know, being selfless in a way where it's like yeah I may have accomplished some things and you may look at it as this great thing and of course it's great and we happy and we celebrate and you know what I'm saying salute to all of the hard work and 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 all of that but I think the the important part or the interesting part for me is to hear you not even really dwell on that right because that happened x amount of years ago but now today we're elevating constantly and that's not the the, in, the entire uh, portion of your life can you speak a little bit to how maybe people might try to keep you in that box because it's such a, a thing for people? Um, you know, talk about that a little bit, because I'm, I'm sure you've probably experienced that or gone through that. Yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> I think that I'm a great, great example of that. Um, Cause you know, like you remember Jersey, I retired early, right? I, yeah. leave. I was one of the first ones kind of out of our crew to hang it up, but mm -hmm. it was kind of, for that very fact, it was like, I was ready to get on to what was next in my life. You know, I was like, yo, I've been playing football my whole life, you know, and I love it, you know, but I was starting to feel like, you know, 
like I always had this thing where it was like high school. It was like, yo, when you a senior, you don't really hang out with the freshmen. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. like after I got a little older, it was like, look, I done been in the league four or five years. I'm like, these dudes coming in, I can't relate to them. I don't, you know what I mean? So it was mm-hmm. like now it's time for me to be the bigger brother and grow, you know, go find out, you know, what's on that other side, you know, because like you say, cats will try to play a hundred years if they could, you know, and, you know, cause that's what they comfortable with. But with me, it was opposite. It was like, you know, I just want to use it kind of to get a little name, you know, where I can, you know, make a few phone calls and, and go start something else. And um, like I say, man, you remember, you know, bless all people was kind of the first nonprofit thing that I was doing where we were doing, you know, major community events, you know, from throwing concerts to goddamn, uh, going to the retirement homes and, and having dances with the old folks or, you know, and people always do the food giveaways and all that, you know, but we try to, right. you know, be creative and do different shit, man. And um, like I say, man, and it, it all brings it back to right now, you know, like I think right now is the best time of my life, um, you know, more importantly or more than anything that I've ever done before because, I, they can't control me now, you know, and I say, you know, before playing for a team or working for an organization or whatever, but now it's like I create a hundred Rock Carmichael, Cam Chancellor, Jason Worlds, you know, Top mm-hmm. Rod Taylor. Like I got a bunch of those kids that's, you know, going off and being successful. And now they paying kids in high school to play ball, right? With NIL deals and all right, kinds of stuff. Right. It's like, it's a, it's a whole new game. And I want it to be, in front of that, you know, and I think that's what I'm doing now, man. So it's it's everything's working out perfectly, bro. Word, that's fire, bro. That's fire. And um, so so talk a little bit about um your particular because again, yeah, I mean it's been a while since um since we actually yeah. connected. So and I I see you know what's going on online, but just kind of talk about um specifically uh some of those things and your mentoring programs and just how how active you are um in the community and with the youth. Word. Um, so <clears throat> bless all people kind of evolved um to what we call what I call one percent now and right in one percent, you know, you hear people say uh, get one percent better or you know what I mean or whatever kind of little sayings, but when I went to the league, you know, I learned, you know, the the I guess the ratio you would say of the chances that you have to actually make it right from high school to the NFL and you know, if there are 2 million high school senior football players, right, 1,500 of those out of that 2 million uh, uh, be awarded a uh, Division One scholarship, right? Mm-hmm. Out of those 1,500, only 200 guys get invited to the NFL Combine every year, right? So out of that 2 million of y'all playing football as a senior in high school, that number is going to get cut all the way down to 200 people that's going to get invited to this NFL combine that's going to get, you know, what they kind of dreams answer. And that's a 1% chance. It's less than a 1% chance, you know? So it's like, I, I, you know, that's what kind of, like I say, bless all people evolved into after, you know, I got to the league and, you know, you start sitting in these different meetings and hearing people talk. And it's like, you know, this is some special and it takes, you know, some special. And it's not just about, you being able to do drills or run fast or catch the ball is like, bro, you got to have everything checked off the board mentally. You know, I'm like, you got to be able to get, you know, hit in the face and get back up and, and not throw a temper tantrum and cuss out the coach. You know what I'm saying? Or oh, that's going to take money away from you. You got to be able to, you know, shit, go out and hang out if you want to have a good time and still wake up and be where you're supposed to be and be a professional on time, you know? So it's, it's so many more things that uh, that go into being successful. Um, and I think just that name kind of puts everything under under one umbrella and it's, you know, short and sweet. So it's like, that's kind of what we run under now. And um, with that, you know, I kind of, man, mentor kids, bro. Like we got kids starting at Alabama, that's come from under us, Virginia Tech, UNC, UVA. Like, I, you know, I'm a hokey, but I don't discriminate. It's like, shit, yeah, yeah. y'all gonna- boys i'm gonna do you know whatever i need to do to help take care of the boys um and up and down the east coast you know i I work with you know rivals 247 sports max preps like any of those major 
um, analyst, right? I used a little NFL PA connections and shit that I have to say, hey, I done did something in my past. This is, you know, my resume check out. I need to be able to show up to these events with a couple kids, right? Like just, even if it's just one, they let me sneak one in through the door. You know, it's like, wow. that's cool. Help him out, you know, help him get his rankings, his, you know, his stars and, you know, make him a national recruit. And that's, that's literally what I do, man. I travel up and down the East Coast, um, letting people know kind of like the criteria it's going to take if you say this is what you want to do um, and, and, and showing them how to make it come true, you know, and it's like you got somebody now, you know, I tell people now we have a politic, you know, us guys, mm -hmm. our age, yeah. it was like, yo, we had to fight and do what we had to do. But now, you know, it's like we got one of us on the side where I can, you know, I can be a politic and, and help people get, get some things accomplished, man. Word. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, fellas. Now I'm just uh I'm taking it all in and shit. That's that's fire. That's fire. Um, where maybe uh, where I'm I'm hearing you talk and it kind of put me in the mind. I just seen uh Kyrie's I am athlete interview. Mm -hmm. And kind of some of the things he was touching on sound like some of the things you touching on with just, you know, purpose outside of the league and what comes next and not letting them pretty much mess with your mind too much, like trying to protect your mind. And I want you to touch a little bit more on that, just protecting your mind and your inner peace when dealing with all of that. Yeah, man, I actually did a... Uh... I had an interview with ESPN about a, about a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I don't even know how it happened. They just called and, um, and it was kind of touching on that fact. And they were asking like, you know, the mental state of the athlete and, you know, how does it get developed and things of that nature. And I had to stop everyone and tell them like, man, you know, if you want to be a professional athlete, right. No matter, um, my bad. I froze, man. Can y'all sit hear me? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, we can hear you. Uh, you did freeze like a little bit though. Oh, hold on one second. All right. Uh oh. All right, we good uh yeah i can hear you i can't um i can't see you right now okay all right so i want me to just keep keep flowing there it goes back yeah it should be good yeah. yeah. okay um and you know like i said man the mental the mental state right of these athletes man it's like you preparing especially football guys it's like we preparing our whole life to be warriors right you preparing to be ready to work, run through a wall, you know, and they tell you turn that shit on and off when they want you to, right? Yeah, and you and and then it's it's like you can't, but you can't really control that, you know. So it, it has to be somebody. That's why so many athletes getting in trouble or you know fall into drugs or you know, because I'm like, you know, it's almost like a trap, you know. I'm telling the yeah. kids. Because it's, it's going to come a time where what you're doing isn't cool anymore. Like, it's going to come a time where you're going to hit that wall where they like, yo, it's another one of you. You know what I'm saying? Or like, yeah. it's going to change. Like, you're going to hit a wall when things are going to change. Right? And it's almost like, as an athlete, there's nothing we can do because it starts to pick. And like, that's why we call it 1%. I'm like, bro, the shit start out when you young, like weeding yourself out, you know, seeing who can take orders, you know, who can get yelled at, you know, by these, these grown men that ain't never even played in the league, but they yelling at eight year olds and shit, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, so it starts man, almost like a, uh, you know, it's just a, it's just a circle, right? An unbreakable, an unbreakable thing. And, you know, no matter how much, you know, I love it and I appreciate it, you know, I am here to let the cats know, like, yo, it is it's slavery, you know, like at the end of the day, it's, it, you working for a dollar, it don't matter how much it is, and you expect it to be yes, sir, no, sir, you know, and I'm like, I've been 
up there when you get stripped down and they, you know, they put you, leave you in your tights and, you know, put your arms out there and measure you and all of that. Like I'm one of them. I'm yeah. I'm one of the top of the top, you know. Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, get this. that shit do it do something to you mentally, you know. And it's almost like either you're going to, you know, be broken or you're going, you know, you're going to fight and have a hard fight throughout your career, you know. But that's just that's just you know the the truth of it. But like I say, now you got guys like myself that's able to come back and try to help and prepare them guys mentally, you know, as much as possible because, you know, it's a war going on, man, you know. No man to stay yeah. from. <laughs> That's a fact. Um, so real quick, um, I want to uh, switch it real quick to, uh, to, to some music talk, right? Because I remember, um, you know, you had a, a, a good, you had, you had good taste. <laughs> you know what I'm Appreciate saying? It. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, yeah. It. You had good taste, and you know my. I, I don't. I don't be just throwing the throwing the stamp out like that. You know what I'm saying? Nah. I, I know. I know you. Uh, I know you. You you tapped in and you went tuned to uh to to good music. So, um, just you know, kind of like a sidebar. Like, are you? Because we talk about it often. As far you know, we we talk about hip hop obviously often, and from the perspective of listening to music, do you listen to? You still listen to like the old whatever your classes is, whatever your go-tos are and always have been. You still pretty much go through that, or you do kind of stay tapped into some of the newer artists and, and some of what's going on today. Like where where are you in your your zone of of, of music? Oh man, you no, know, I'm you know, I, I I gotta be honest, you know, like I, I got my go-to, you know, I think everybody does, but I'm with the kids, bro. So I'm on the new <laughs> stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm oh, like, shit. You know, take 20, 25 guys. Like just last weekend, I took 20 kids to Dallas. We went to SMU, Texas A&M, TCU. You know, they did the football camps. Like out of those 20 guys, probably about 12 guys came back with different scholarship uh, offers. Like oh. it was a real, you know, thing. But I'm like, Imagine being in them Airbnbs, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm, saying? Yeah. So I'm like, I, I know that got to be wild funny, too. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, what I put out, you know, I show the football stuff and recruiting stuff, but we've been recording, like, for the documentary, like, the past, like, three, four years. We just haven't, you know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, man, Dudes, they be in there from different places. They get in a fight and this shit and all. It be, you know, for a young man, like it might be a fight over a PlayStation controller or who ate the last piece of pizza or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, they keep me in tune with all the music. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I'm still, you know, uh, boom bap, you know, soulful. Like, that's still what I'm looking for. Like, Right now, I, honestly, my favorite artist right now, bro, probably is Westside Gun. You know, yeah, just yeah, yeah. yeah. I like Westside. I like yeah. Westside. I was just listening to that album earlier, yo. That album is incredible. His last album is incredible. Westside is the guy, and then you know, I like you know, I could you we could all tell you know you see he the brains behind that. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. 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 I look at him like a. Like a street Kanye, you know what I'm saying? That's how but I, I think I think he, That's he good. Yeah. underrated. I think people don't listen to his bars as much because of the voice. Yeah, but, but I think he be talking that talk. He is just he. Yeah. Be, I like what he be saying. He be talking that talk. Yeah, yeah. But you gotta yeah. get past the voice and the 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 art of it. it, it right. It's, He's very artsy, but that's yeah. why I like what he said. He said like the street version of Kanye. That's actually that's pretty good. That's how yeah. I look at, and I use him for motivation like that. I ain't gonna lie, like he motivation. Word. That's fire. That's fire. It, you know what I mean? I, to keep it where we from and keep it our age, but still yeah. put pressure. Young dude. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I done, I done had some arguments over West Side. Like, nah, he eating. You gotta listen to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's a fact. What'd you say, Key? You should ain't come through. Uh, nah, so you got the top five? Top five? Uh, right now, though. Right now. Not ever. Yeah. 
top five for right now. Uh, like that's hard, man. That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I can give you so I can probably go. Well, no, I can go top five for right now. Like I can. That's that's simple. I I don't know no order, but I gotta go Kendrick. I gotta go Cole. I gotta go. Um, I like Tyler the Creator a lot. Like that last album, like art. I like, like, I like yeah. music, you know? I don't know if he'd be considered ranking that high. Uh, I respect, I respect little baby and them dudes. I like, I respect, I understand it, but it's not really my style. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's like, mm-hmm. like, I respect the noise that they make. Um, I mean, I don't know, man. I'm stuck right now. I, li- I like Favi a lot from up north. You know, I yeah. think Favi the music and him getting with Kanye, like they they kind of trying to do something. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, man, you know all the drill rappers. You know the kids. They got me listening to all the drill rappers. And all that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, it's, it's, talks, a, man. it's a lot of them too. It's a lot of the, it's a lot of them that I don't know, and that's when you that's when I start to look at myself like, damn, like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm tapped in, but it's like, yo, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. We're getting at that age where I'm not gonna lie. I just I ask the youngest. I'd be like, yo, who should I be listening to? Give me just send me five names, and I'm gonna just download it. And on this yeah. trip, I'm gonna check it out. You know. Yeah, but you yeah. find some stuff. You find some good stuff with the young dudes, man. Were. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you can't be you can't be old and a hater. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, you gotta. Nah. You, you got to let them rock and, and, and do what it is they're going to do and, and rock with what you rock with and, and keep it pushing. Um, yeah. So, um, all right. So doubling back real quick. So originally born in North Carolina, right? Right. Originally North Carolina. And then what you grew up. What part of NC? Uh, Longburg. Like, so right there in the country, man, like, uh, close to, actually close to south of the border, like close to South Carolina, right, right on 95, right there. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, and then is it safe to say you spent most of your time in Maryland? 100%. Um, so talk a little bit about, um, you know, your upbringing or just Maryland, that, that, that life, you know, kind of what you, what, what, what you come from and, and kind of what it was like, uh, back home. Well, yeah, man. Um, Carolina shit was different, um, you know, and I, I, I think that's definitely my foundation. I live between uh, Dillon, South Carolina, and like that Lomberg, North Carolina area, till I was about ten years old, and then we moved uh, up to Maryland. Pops had went into the Air Force and all that stuff like that, but um, you know, I tell cats all the time, like, yo, me growing up in that Carolina era, right, uh, area, when Obama was, you know, campaigning for the first time he got the presidency, then the second time, too, he stopped back through there. He went down there, bro, this shit's still on YouTube, right? It's called Dillon, South Carolina. Obama goes down there and do like a, you know, his speech and whatever. He said, well, we got third world countries inside the United States, you know, that people aren't aware of, right? Where the this, this shit is, is, it's worse than, right the country the countries like the places y'all trying to help like we have places here that's that bad and mm. that's where i'm from you know what i'm saying like mm. the shit is there that's where you know we were born we was raised you know like my my whole bloodline and family you know come from uh like i tell people i'm like bro i remember before i was 10 like we know ne- i didn't even see like you know a park or a playground like we was like in the trailer parks right so like mm. what we did in the trailer parks, the only field was the graveyard. I'm like, bro, we used to go to the graveyard and play football in the mm. graveyard. I didn't even know that it was a, didn't even think twice about it. Like, I remember, mm. like, bro, I grew up throwing fireworks and hiding and playing in the graveyard because it wasn't nowhere else. You know, like, mm. we come from really, and I used to take, you know, you know, worlds, like me and worlds used to go down there and see the shit. And it's like, you know, no bathrooms. Like it's the trailers, no bathroom. Like you use the bathroom in the bucket. You gotta dump that bitch and fill it up with water. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It was like when I moved up north, it was like I just felt like everything was easy. You know what I'm saying? I was like, even though you know, you go to different uh, you know, 
uh, uh, communities, I don't want to call them projects, but you know what I mean? You went to different neighborhoods and it was like, well, shit, at least, at least you got a bathroom. You know what I'm saying? At least you yeah. got a, you know, and it was different, you know, a lot of people living on top of each other, but like I say, it was just a, you know, a different, um, a different way of living. And then, um, you know, I, I started moving a little further up north and that's how me and Jersey got connected, man. My man, Jason Worlds, like I ended up meeting him kind of like in that middle school. So Jersey, I don't know if you knew Jay's brother, right? You remember his brother, Boo, his older yeah. brother. Yeah. Boo, my dad used to work together, right? Mm. So when I moved from Carolina to Maryland, that's when I met Boo. And that's, okay. that's how- right. Okay, yeah, the, yeah. The type of, and then it was like when we went to Virginia Tech, it was I didn't know. Like didn't yeah. we didn't even he committed, I committed, and it was like, you know what I mean? But I was like I said, that's a, a story yeah. that a lot of people, you know what I mean, that wouldn't wouldn't really understand. But now yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? it's right, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, but no, nah, man, that that was kind of like my upbringing. Growing up in Maryland was cool, bro. Uh my high school team, all 11 players went division one football. I played with uh, Kyle Arrington was the other cornerback. You know, he won a couple of Super Bowls with the Patriots. Um, Phil Taylor, first round defensive lineman. He was on the field with us, a, a bunch of guys, man. So yeah. this, I came up here and kind of got into the right circles and played ball. But, you know, like I say, man, life is always full circle, man. Me growing up, and being down there in the country and seeing a different lifestyle, like I say, that's what made me really be selfless. You know what I'm saying? Hum, yeah, like, and, and humble and all of those things. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then like you said, you know, you was with us through through a lot of the successful yeah. times. I was yeah. always like, like, let's just, it's whatever. Like everybody gonna eat. It's for everybody. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> Word. That's um, that's fire. And um, and so talk talk to uh me and the people really. A little bit about go go music, right? Because let me tell you, let me tell you. I was listening to Wale on uh, Drink Chip earlier. That's crazy. Listen, when I went to Norfolk State, and you know, it was obviously that's the DMV area. Well, that's not the DMV area, but you know, DMV. Um, yeah, and um, all of the people from DC was playing go go. I'm like, song. No, what? <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely hey, yo, not. Yeah, I mess with it. Yo. You can't. And and you know what's crazy? You know, you know what's crazy though. Check it, right? Because I'm a drummer, right? So I'm a musician and all those different things. So I would, I would think that I would like it because it was like a different version of club music. How club music take regular songs, and I'll let you explain it. But like, I got it, but it was like, nah. And then you had to, you kind of had to be there, right? So when certain, again, it's a lot of people put, from DC. You put it's together a, a spin and a dip to it, didn't you? Yeah. No, no. Nah, no. <laughs> no, I wasn't. You put together a spin and a dip, and then it was over to the races. So you no, 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 no. We never, we never took it quite that far. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but anyway, but yeah, tell tell us about Go Go, man, because that's a specific music to the DC area. So kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um. Wow. So you remember uh, Nikos Brown in yeah. Virginia Tech? Yeah. You know, father right was is Chuck Brown, the dude who started mm, the golf. I didn't know that, or maybe I knew that, but okay, yeah. So that's literally. Crazy. When we used to be down there in school, you remember like so Jay and Luck was the original roommates and from mm -hmm. Jersey and, and Nikos, right? Nikos from DC, his dad Chuck Brown, like the legendary, you know, godfather. Um so honestly, man, like you I when I came up here, I didn't understand it either. It was a thing that I kind of had to I had to learn to respect. And it you know, especially like I say, I'll fast forward a little bit when I got around Chuck, like I thought I met Nikos and I got around the creator of it and you got to talk to him. Like this might be some some super intel, right? That a lot of people might not understand, but Chuck Brown will tell you that Go-Go came from funk, 
you know, like it was before, before it was what we have now, what you think of Go-Go, it was, I feel like Bustin' Loose, uh, right. uh, Loose, because that's, that's his, that's like, that's his song, but that's, that's his song. main, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, but that's what it was supposed to be, like a live version of funk mm. music. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, at the time go by, I don't want to say it got, it, it changed. I wouldn't say anything else. It just, it changed. You know, things get simpler. Um, and then it became kind of, uh, it's only like four beats of go-go, maybe three, you know, it's a couple beats. Everything is produced over the same beat. But it's more so like a, a feel. And it's it's a thing that once you go and you hear it live, it's different. You know, it sounds better live. It's, it's like it's live music. You know, when you get to D.C., you know, that's why they call it Chocolate City, man. It's a lot of uh, immigrants, you know, the Africans, the Jamaicans, the Haitians. So instead of kind of like I, I tell people, I'm like up north, they, they get a little saucy with it. You know what I'm saying? Like they <laughs> You know, and I'm like, but here it's like the same thing, like you say, like the Jersey music, but it's just more grassroots. You know what I'm saying? Like it went, yeah. it went musicianship um, you know. and live, and yeah, 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 yeah. So like, over the recording is never really the best recordings and things to hear. But like I say, once you go and you know, hearing all the instruments and everything playing together, and you know, it's only a few like real go-go bands I would say that make their own song, you know, 100 percently, but. Most cats, man, you you get something off the radio that you can sing, got a good tune to it, and you know you put it to that 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 you know African drum beats and shit, and you yeah you know get you a cup and you feel all right. <laughs> <laughs> <That's the word. laughs> and who could be I mad at that? <laughs> <laughs> And she brought me to the spot. Yeah, I ain't know what was going on. Like they was dancing and moving. I'm like, yo, this is good. Cause I remember in 2012 when you when you brought me to um the homecoming <laughs> and they started playing sexy lady. I'm like, yo, what's going on? Everybody started going crazy. I'm like, sexy lady. Yeah. And I see everybody kicking up. I'm like, oh why? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, I know where this from, you feel me? Like, I was really like next time I went out there, I, I was like, yo, bring me to the spot. Like, I'm trying to get jiggy too, like. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I just I just watched on the sideline. I was in there though. That shit was live, y'all. Fuck with it. Yeah, yeah, man. The girl, the ladies, man. The ladies love it, man. You know, the young young crowd, they get a little rowdy. But you know, up in our age now, man, you come out here, you go to them spots, man. Them them them, them old go go ladies that get you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, that's that's real, yo. Um, so real quick, uh, before we, uh, before we end it, just, a just another, um, sidebar is yeah. it, I know you, I know you, you know, busy and doing what you're doing with, with the youth and, and what have you, do you get any time to yourself to watch TV at all? And if you do, do you watch like any particular shows and, or any, anything that you, you know, kind of tap into when you do go on YouTube or TV or whatever? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, you always got to take that time, you know, for your own mental kind of to, you know, either debrief or just separate, you know, for what it is. And, you know, every night for me, I try to get on, you know, YouTube and, sh and shut it down, man. Honestly, I'm a huge Marvel guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get on the Disney and I ain't going to lie, I watch all the Marvel shows <laughs> ever put out. You know what I'm saying? That's like all back right. to out. With all yeah. them do that. So I watch any of that stuff. Um, then I, I, I get on YouTube, man, and just just kind of check out, I would say, like, keep up with the news, you know, because it'd be so much shit going on, you know, with, you know, rappers passing away all the time and, you know, just all the craziness. And it's like, shit, you yeah. can get it from just, you know, going to check out a couple a couple YouTube, you know, uh, shows that throughout the day. Mm. Uh podcast space you know I'm, I'm big on the drink my bad big on the drink champs um big on the joe button i like watching joe button i know a lot of people be hating on my man joe but uh, <laughs> you know I, as the immaculate bars you know like i understand penmanship and all of that so it's like i you know i've been fighting for joe since i've been hanging out with the jersey cats you know <laughs> 
represent. I represent for it, you know. Um, I think the only podcast, and like I said, YouTube, man, I check out whatever, but mainly I just try to put on, you know, some Marvel and really, bro, you know, I'll, I'll give that gem before we leave. You know, I learned uh, when I went to the league, you know, so much was going on. Um, I had lost uh, a close family member to me. So the Texans had made me start uh, uh, going to therapy like um, like once a week, twice a week or something like just just, to, you know, ask my talk to. Mm-hmm. And the lady and she taught me something, bro, that I never like I still do to this day. And I try to tell as many people as possible. Right. So she said, you know. To disconnect or to keep your brain fresh, try to find something that you can't even relate to to watch, you know. So she was like, don't watch football or don't watch, you know, the things that you're familiar with because that's going to put you in a familiar place, you know. So she was like, go click on some white dudes and watch some dudes hunting and fishing and wilding out some shit that you're not used to seeing just so Mm -hmm. it can absolutely refresh you. And that's that's what I like to do. You know, I get on YouTube, man, and it'd be like, I I, I want to look at something that I don't know, you know, just so I can have a clean mind when I go to sleep and get new thoughts, you know, and, instead of, you know, sticking into whatever, you know, whatever you're going yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, you know? your normal routine. Yeah, you know, and like I say, that's something that helped me a lot, man. You know, try to, try to pick out something to check out that you can't relate to, you know, and then, like I say, it, it kind of, Keep you fresh and creative, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. you do that every night. Yeah, try to do that. Yeah, that's dope. You know, I don't know what kind of podcast this is, but you know, you know what time that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the way live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right. yeah. Hey yo, so so um, cause I, I don't want to just gloss over that jewel, cause that is a jewel, that is a bar. Um, and I think you know I'll definitely you know pick that one up and and, and yeah. test that one out. And um, yeah. you know, hopefully a lot of people listening will do the same. But it's interesting you say that, cause uh, however long ago on the pod, uh, we had gotten to a conversation about uh following people that you're not interested. in. And necessarily, or you don't necessarily share their ideals or you agree with them. Like, so for example, just as an example, um, like somebody who's polarizing like a, a Candace Owens. It's like, if you know how polarizing of a figure she is or a person, per, per, personality, whatever you want to call it, um, how polarizing she is, and you don't agree with anything that she's talking about, maybe it would be a good idea to follow them or or do you think it would be a good idea to follow them like that was the time that was the kind of conversation we had had once um about that so it's dope that you know you've kind of adapted that and you kind of made it the same way but different you know what i'm saying because youtube everybody going to youtube like youtube got right. everything you could possibly need to see anyway <laughs> yeah yeah you know what i mean twitter twitter twitter's maybe limited to a certain type of you know the algorithms and all of that like but um uh with youtube no i think that that's uh that's fire that's fire and i'm gonna definitely like i said i'm gonna pick that one up and put it in my pocket for sure you can you, can, you know help help like bro everything bro just keeping that mental space and stability you know for yourself is like you know no matter the big biggest games i've been in like you know all the ups and downs and all that shit is like from all of that pressure you know and having your adrenaline be at such a high level so for so long you know i i learned you know to follow the basic rules of life bro stay even kill you know as much as possible and it's like you know and i would tell you know say to that fact you know throw my two cents in on you guys argument i'm like i think that's kind of like one of the the 48 laws of power and you just got to know your limit you know it's like you got to know is that good for you? It's simple. Is it good for you or is it bad for you? You know, and it's like shit. Sometimes following, you know, somebody with a little bit more or some things, it can be motivation. 
or sometimes it could be detrimental to you. You don't need to see that. You know, you need to, to focus on what you have going on and, you know, and going being successful that way. So it's like whatever stage you at, you know, it's, it's, it's probably different, um, you know, levels or something to it. But yeah, man, you know, like I say, the mental, you know, this shit like Dr. Strange, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody, <laughs> everybody is physical for so long, but now it's like, you know, the, the mental ways of everything starting to come out. And, you know, I think that you take better care of yourself that way, man. Word, word. And um, I won't I won't step on that that point at all. Uh, fellas, y'all got anything else uh, before we before we get out of here? Nah. That um, got oh, that was it. That was so cool for the mental right there. <laughs> there it is. Um, so uh, on that note, um, I definitely want to remind everybody first and foremost, thank you, uh, for coming through for stopping through. Um, you know, and you know, much, much success, much love to you moving forward. Um, you know, and everything that you're doing. Um, I definitely just want to say on air, I'm definitely proud of of you and everything that you have been able to accomplish. Like it's it's inspiring and it's and it's a good thing anytime that you can see somebody that you haven't connected with in in however long it's been, but to know that you know what I mean it's a steady elevation, like that's all you could ever really ask for. So um, shout out to you, uh, first and foremost, and um, everybody out there. Make sure again, um, if you're not subscribed, make sure y'all do that. Make sure y'all telling a friend to tell a friend. And until next time, everything Rico. <laughs>